How to use GraphQL as a data layer for your application. My name is Roy, and in this video I'll be showing how you can build a GraphQL API data layer for all your underlying microservices, and even for third-party REST APIs. So let's dive in. Being a data layer based on three separate REST API endpoints. To get the REST API endpoints, we will be using JSON placeholder. In here we can find several endpoints, an example to get posts, comments, and the users that wrote these posts. As you can see, for posts, we can get a list of all the posts, and we can also get a single post. While this is loading, let's have a look at the comments. We can get a list of comments, and we can also get a single comment. We can even filter the comments by post ID. And for users, we can do the same. We can get a list of users, we can get a single user, and we can also search for a user by its name. To transform these REST API endpoints into GraphQL, we will be using StepSend. You can install StepSend CLI from NPM, like this. But of course, I can close this as I already installed the CLI before recording this video. So let me run a curl command to import one of the endpoints. So this is the endpoint to get all the posts. Let me first try the curl endpoint just to be sure. So what you do with StepSend is just importing a curl command. So if I run a curl command, it will give me the data as I saw in the browser, except this time it will be shown in my terminal. With StepSend, I can use the same command to import this REST API endpoint into a GraphQL schema. I can use some cool things like user naming. So let's name the file posts. We can also name the query. So we can do query name is maybe just also posts. And then we can also do the query type, which would be post. If I run this, it will create a new GraphQL schema after I, of course, told them what the endpoint should be called. So let's call this API slash data layer, as we are building a data layer for several REST API endpoints. It created three files for me. One is a index.graphql file, which has my GraphQL schema to get all the posts. And then there is some other files to bring together all the information we just had. Let's do the same thing with the comments. Let's do the same thing with the comments. I go back to my browser and I will find the comments endpoint. Just to be funny, let's also try to do this one, which is using the post ID in the query parameters. We're gonna be doing the same thing. We run steps and import curl, paste the URL, give the directory a name. Let's call it comments. Give the query a name, so query name would be comments, and then query type would be comment. So this again will create a new directory with a index.graphql file. And in the main index.graphql file, you can see the new files already being appended. If I go into comments, you can see I have my uh, GraphQL schema for the comments REST API, and it also included an argument as I had the query parameter inside my curl request. In the endpoint, you can see the argument isn't there because it has been automatically, it will automatically be appended whenever I provide an argument. And then finally, let's also get the users in there. Again, let's use the one with the query parameter. We run steps in import curl, paste the endpoint, name the directory. So name would be users. We name the query. So query name is also users. And then the query type would be user. If I run this, I have imported three separate REST API endpoints into one GraphQL schema. So for users, we have something similar, except there are a bit more types because the REST API returned more types. The only thing I need to do now to deploy this API is running steps and start, and this will deploy my GraphQL API to steps and cloud. Of course, you could also choose to upload it to a private cloud or maybe inside your own collocation center. So let me try out one of these endpoints, like this one. And in here you can see we can find the schema. So we can see we have three different queries that we can try out. So an example, we can try out the comments. We try out to get some comments. Maybe get them by post ID, why not? To so get all the comments for post ID one. 
If I run this, I will get the same information as I already saw in the browser. I can do the same thing, of course, just delete this one, get a list of posts, and this will all work just fine. And I can also get the whole list of comments and then maybe append the ID and the name. But what I want to do, I want to make a combination between posts, comments, and also the user, because my posts will also return a user ID. So I'm going to be doing this using StepSend. What I will be doing, I'll be creating a new file called combinations.graphql. And in here, I will be extending the types that I already have. So what I do is I extend type post. And in here, I will be appending the comments. Let me say I just have comment. But this on its own won't work because of course I need to tell GraphQL and steps and where the data is coming from. So for this, I will be using something called materializer. And in materializer, I can use this comments post, this query, and then use a name. So the argument would be post ID, which gets the field ID of post. And if I save this, I of course also need to add my combinations here. Do it like this and rename this to combinations. Of course, clean it up a bit. Let me see, I get an error because it cannot find the type comment. So if I go in here, let's see what my type is called. My type is called comment entry. I put that one there and then save it. And now it should be working all fine. I also cannot extend the post type because it's actually post entry. And if I save this, my new data layer will be deployed. If I go back to my graphical instance, we just get rid of all these queries and refresh the page. You can see instead of having to get posts and comments side by side, I can now query the posts, the comments inside the post query. I can do comments, then do the name and so forth. So this will not only get the posts, it will also get the comments for a post. And as you can see, some posts have a lot of comments and some rarely have any. So finally, what I want to do, instead of getting a user ID, so let's get rid of comments. Instead of getting a user ID, I also want to get the user with that ID. For this, I go back to my code and inside users, I actually will be creating a new query to get a user by ID. So let me get a single user like this, change this into user ID, oh. and then append it here. So using the dollar sign, I can append the user ID there and then just save it. So this allows me to get a single user instead of a list of users. If we go back to combinations, I can also add the user information here. So let me type this user. Let's return user entry this time and then use the materializer and link it to the user ID field. If I save this, it will redeploy this to StepSense Cloud. I can see I have a small error. So let me see how to fix it. Requires type user entry. I think I have to find type user entry. I have type user, Let me try and figure out what's going wrong. Field query dot user requires, so I think my mistake is actually there because this should be a single user entry instead of a list of user entries because I'll just be getting a single user. Just wait till it redeploys and then head back to the graphical interface. Let me just refresh this. And instead of getting a single user ID, I should now be able to get the user information, like a name. Refresh this, and then you'll see no information actually being fetched for me. Let me try and figure out why. Let me go here. So this all looks correct. I've created a query to get a single user by its ID. And then if I go to the combinations, I can actually see this field should be user ID as well as I will be using the user ID from post to get this information. If I head back to graphical and I press search, you can see it can find the user based on the post ID. And as you can see here, different users creating posts. 
Although most users seem to have multiple posts. So Patricia has multiple posts. Well, Clementine also has multiple posts. So this in short is how you build a GraphQL API data later using steps in. Now I just use three separate REST API endpoints, but these endpoints can also be different REST API third party services, or maybe microservices that you like to combine. Because maybe your comments, posts, and users don't come from Monolith, but they will be coming from different microservices. And if you like this video, make sure to press the like button below, and also subscribe to this channel to stay updated whenever we launch a new video.